Hello everyone, I've got to make a spring. Now it's not a normal compression spring or a, or a tension spring, it's a spring which looks like this. Now this I've made out of paper, but this is the shape and size that I have to make it to. Now the processes that I use to let the steel down and also harden it again to make it back into a spring is just the same for flat bar as it is for a normal spring. So if you're interested to see how you can adjust a spring shape, then this is a video for you. Anyway, how are we going to make this spring? Well, the first thing we're going to need is some material. Now what you see here is a piece of spring steel that I found on my shelves. I've only got two types of spring steel unfortunately. This came from a mattress, it held the mattress uh, in, in its shape. Uh, the other piece I have is only half a millimetre thick. So I'm going to use this piece of material first and see how we get on. Now the original spring was 11 millimetres wide, that's 7 sixteenths. This material is 10 millimetres wide, so it's almost there. Uh, the original thickness was one millimetre, which is around about 40 thou, where this is 1.7 millimetres, so this is 67 thou. So it's a little bit thicker. So I think what we lose on the width, we gain on the thickness. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to work okay. Now, I've made this little drawing just here. And this shows the, the shape of the original spring. Now what I'm going to do is cut off, well I measured all the way around here and it comes out to about three and a half inches which is 90 millimetres. So what I'm going to do is cut off 120 millimetres from this, that's about four and three quarter inches, and then shape this to suit that drawing. But of course this is spring steel so if you try to bend it Two things could happen, it, it will bend but it will spring back a little, but it may crack because the temper is such that the, the spring is quite hard and it doesn't like being bent. So what we need to do is upset the temper in here first which will allow it to bend. And we do that by heating the material up to a dull red. And then at that temperature the springiness of the material will disappear and we'll be able to bend it. Anyway I'll be showing you how we do that in a little bit. Right, I've just cut 120 millimeter length off that piece of spring steel. I now need to bend this along the line I've put on here, but around this eight millimeter piece of steel. Now, <clears throat> I want to use my trusty vise here uh, to do this. So I just need to work out how to hold it so I can do this bending. This is the setup I've come up with. You notice that the, the rear soft jaw in the vise I've cut along here and brought this edge up. The eight millimetre steel bar is being held uh, in the vise. This is our job and I have written or I've drawn a line just here. Now that's our bend line and we need to put this in the vise round about there. But of course when I heat this up to a dull red that line will disappear. So what I've done is put another line on the jaw of the vise just here. So I can line that end up against there this being red hot will be soft, the spring will be annealed out so I can grab this end with a pair of pliers and pull it around so it's pointing down. And that will give us a U shape uh, on this piece of spring steel. So let's give that a go. Right, I've set the blow lamp up and here's our piece of material and we need to heat it round about there. Once it's red Dull red, we put it into the jig like this, and then I'll bend this end around here. I've got that line for the end of that piece of spring steel. So let's warm this up. The line that I've put on the steel is where I want the tip of that inner cone, that's the hottest part of the flame. And of course, that first bottle of gas ran out, so I've just changed the, the gas, getting it getting the job back in the pliers and we'll start heating it again. Hopefully it will heat a lot quicker now. I have most of the lights turned off. I can just start seeing a dull red now on this piece of metal. Turn the gas off, we put it in our jig, line up this end with the end 
of the piece of metal, get that down to the bottom and now bend it round. Here's our first bend. This is what our spring looks like now. Now when this goes into the rim latch it has to fit onto a shaft up here. So what I need to do is push in these two edges so it doesn't fall off of that pin. Now I've got the original 8mm pin that this was bent around. So what I'm going to do is put that in there and tighten up the vise using these radius on the soft jaws to push in uh, the sides and hopefully put a radius on here. Now I'm hoping that the, the heating I did before has uh, softened uh, the metal enough that it will do this. If this doesn't work then what I'm going to have to do is heat this up to red heat again and then put it in and see if it bends. But first of all let's tighten up the vise and we'll see if it will bend at all. It's looking good. I'll keep going until the vice goes tight, which is just there. Right, let's see what that looks like. Well, it's looking pretty good. I've now mounted our spring in the vice. The bar that it was bent around is in the centre again, and the the vise is actually clamping it all together just here. Now what I want to do is bend this side of the spring in that direction. Now I think most of the bend is going to happen here because that's where the heat was and that softened that part of the metal and eventually this part needs to be shaped like that so they, they spring out. But first of all I just want to see how far that softened piece of metal is. I'm going to pull this out coming out and as expected the bend is happening down here where we upset the temper with the with the heat. Let's do the same on this side. Yes that's coming away as well. I think the best thing to do here is heat up both of these sides to a red heat. That will upset the temper in the whole of the spring then. Then we can bend it around to the correct shape and then re-heat uh, treat it to bring the, the spring back. I've turned the lights down so we should see it when it starts to glow a dull red. I want to, don't want to take it too hot, I don't want it a bright cherry, just a dull red. I think that's the long side, a dull red. And that's also at a dull red, so I can now place it on the fire brick. Turn the, what's well, better, turn the blow lamp off and now let that cool down. Our spring has now cooled down, here it is, and uh, I'm going to put the 8mm uh, shaft straight back in it and now close it up in the vise and make it flat again. Now we need to bring it together as we did before, like this, so we've got the edges of the vise coming in and crimping those ends together, just like just like that. Right, there we go. Now what we can do is shape these two pieces now to suit the drawing just here. Now you remember I drew this down, this is drawn to scale, and what I'm going to have to do next is bend these two pieces of the, uh, the spring still out so they follow the lines shown on the drawing. That shouldn't be too difficult now because these should be nice and soft and they will bend easy. I've now clamped the spring back in the vise on this uh, eight mil piece of steel and now I need to put the drawing underneath like this and the black lines is where these pieces of spring steel or normal steel now it shouldn't be sprung should be bent to and I in fact It's bending really quite nicely. Huh. That's the oxidisation coming off the side of the, the metal. 
Right, now let's try the side. And I just need to play around with this until we get this bent to the same uh, place as the line. I'll be back. The spring is now at its final shape. You can see that I've brought it around here and uh, I needed this gap fairly close together because I didn't want it coming off the pin inside the uh, the rim latch. So I've brought it in from away from the line here and then turned the end over so it doesn't dig into the, the case of the rim latch. And on this side, this bears against the, the end of the bolt. Uh, so I've turned that end over as well because I didn't want that digging in. But that's the right shape. Next thing to do is the heat treatment to turn this piece of steel back into a spring. And we are all set up to do this hardening. Now we've got the spring here sitting on top of a fire We've got this can with some oil in there. The oil that I'm using is actually motorcycle full coil. It's quite, uh, it's quite runny. Uh, I was told really you should be using uh, automatic transmission fluid oil, but I haven't got any of that. This is the nearest that I have to it. Right, I'm going to be heating with uh, this spring up with the blow lamp to a, a red heat all over. You don't want it orange um, or yellow because that's too hot. It just needs to get up to red all over. Once it's uh, at that temperature, we then pick it up and drop it in the oil. Right, let's give it a go. And the blow lamp is lit. And we will start our heating. And into the oil it goes. And we need to just leave that in there for a few minutes, waiting for it to cool down nice and slowly. And uh, the other thing you need to do is open the door to let the smoke out because you don't want to inhale the smoke from the oil. Right, well, about 10 minutes have gone past now. Let's just fill that. It's warm, but it's not hot, so I think it's time to take this out of the oil. And we're going to wipe the residue of the oil off of the spring. Now, this spring is going to be quite hard at the moment if, if all's gone to plan. And we can't really use it as a spring because it's liable to fracture. So what we have to do is let it down. What that means is just make it a little bit softer. We're going to anneal this and then that will make it into a nice durable spring. Now to do that we need to heat this up, uh, but uh, using the colours on the side, the oxidisation colours. So I'm going to polish up the outside of the, the spring just with a little bit of emery cloth. We put it back onto the fire brick and then we heat it until the colour that we see on the outside becomes a, a straw colour. And at that point we pick the spring up and put it into the oil again uh, to quench it. I'm just getting rid of this black oxide that's formed with this piece of emery cloth. It doesn't have to be brilliantly clean, just enough to see the, the changing of the, the surface colour. And there we go, we've got rid of the oil and those surfaces are now shiny enough so we can keep an eye on the oxidisation colours which form as we heat it. And off we go. Now these colours will form quite quickly. It doesn't have to get that hot. So I'm being very careful here and trying to get the heat even all over the uh, spring. I can start seeing the change now to this surface and it's gone straw coloured and the other side as well so that's ready and we can quench it in the oil. Well, a few minutes has passed so I think we can take our spring out. Let's remove the fire brick. I don't want to get any oil on that and we can take our spring from the oil and dry it off. 
our spring is now finished. Right, I just want to measure between these two, the two ends there, and it comes up to 40 millimeters. Now I'm going to grab hold of the spring and crunch it as hard as I can with my fingers, and then come back again, and it's still on 40 millimeters. So that's good, the spring hasn't crushed in at all. And that's one method of making a custom spring. Now, could you do something like this? Of course you can. With that, this video is at an end. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time.